And perhaps um, most, um, uh, most importantly is this idea of induced pluripotent stem cells and iPS cells. And what this means is that technology has recently been developed um, by the team in Toronto, by Andres Naji and other colleagues that I work with in the McEwen Center for Regenerative Medicine to be able to take skin cells, skin fibroblasts, and in introducing four key transcription factors, and one can make these into an embryonic stem cell. And then you can use what's called the default pathway, taking advantage of normal developmental biology, and you can transform these skin-derived cells into nerve cells. So that's a, fairly, that's a fairly amazing development. And there are a lot of intense efforts underway now to, to uh, take that forward into a practical strategy. So, so how, do, how, do, how do stem cells work? What's the concept? So, Okay, so here we have the, the spinal cord. Normally we have nerve fibers, they conduct signals. There's the myelin sheath or the insulating layer. And they signal electrically from sodium channels at the, at the level of the node of Ranvier. And there are other molecules uh, right next door to that which are important, Casper and, ver and potassium channels. So this is basically how the brain and the spinal cord work. After spinal cord injury, there is a destruction of the center part of the spinal cord. I've tried to show you that in different ways. There's a thin rim of tissue which is preserved. The problem is that there's a loss of the oligodendrocytes that make the myelin, so you lose the insulating layer and you get a conduction block. So these, these, these fibers can't signal properly and you see changes in the organization of the sodium and the potassium channels. The concept is what if you could go in and you could replace that one cell type, try to replace the oligodendrocytes using neural stem cells to do that. And in fact, we've shown that that is possible. The, and one can introduce these stem cells and they will regenerate the myelin sheath and recreate the nodes of Ranvier. And amazingly, this actually works. It's like Buck Rogers. It's incredible. But this is the whole concept of moving forward with uh, neural stem cells based uh, strategies in the setting of spinal cord injury. And the proof of that, many publications, there are, there are four key labs that have been identified in the world that have made significant progress in this area and I'm pleased to say that our, our team in uh, Toronto that's funded through uh, a new emerging teams grant from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research has had a fairly significant role in this. This is some work from my colleague Sohila Karimi when she was a postdoctoral fellow in my lab. The green cells are stem cells, the red is the background of the spinal cord. They proliferate and differentiate beautifully. And in addition, they make myelin. And this is, I showed you the cartoon, but this is what it really looks like. This is on a confocal microscope. The green is a um, a stem cell, we know it was originally a stem cell because we derived this from green fluorescent protein mice and it's sending out a process and it's wrapping its way around uh, the, the axon and this is what remyelination actually, uh, actually looks like. And this is associated with significant improvements in, in function, this is a, a, a functional rep um, assay uh, called a BBB where we're measuring locomotion and then here we can see a rat who's walking along what's called a, a, a grid walk and these animals over time following the stem cell transplant have far fewer um, uh, 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 errors. In addition, we've now developed techniques where we can actually visualize these changes on an MRI. And this is critical if we want to go into clinical trials because we, we, we can't do tissue sections, obviously, from the spinal cord. So how will we know that the stem cells are doing anything? And here, what we're showing, um, and we can develop these beautiful colored images on, on the MRI, and this is work that's done here at Mars at the STAR facility in collaboration with Greg Stanish from Sunnybrook, David Jaffrey, and, uh, and other colleagues, is we can show remyelination. So here, on, the, on these, on these uh, colored images, we see the area of demyelination in yellow, and then with the stem cells, um, it's in blue, and we can actually develop quantitative maps of this. So in addition to just 
kind of looking at the colors, we can actually uh, uh, assess how much remyelination has occurred. And so I can tell you that it is very likely that there will be a neural stem cell trial in spinal cord injury, and there will probably be more uh, uh, than one. And um, so stay tuned, because it's going to be very, it'll be very interesting, and a lot of bets are, are, are going on that the first stem cell trial may in fact be in Canada. So we'll, we'll see. Now the challenge of the chronic injury is there, and here it is again. I showed you this picture before. What are we dealing with? We're dealing with a loss of tissue, a loss of nerve cells, which is profound. We're looking at a, a scar that's formed, and then we're looking at a cyst. So how, how do we overcome this, uh, this kind of a barrier? And there are many approaches that are going to be required. It, it's going to take more than just stem cells here because we need to overcome this. So one of, one of the critical components of this is the scar that forms. And, and here, this is a special stain, and everything here in red represents uh, scar cells. And these prevent the stem cells from differentiating and from growing. And here we see an effort on our part to try to introduce the stem cells, but they're enveloped by the scar tissue. And, and they, don't, they don't regenerate to the same extent as earlier on in the injury. So what if we could target the scar tissue? Would that be possible? And the answer is yes. There are engineered molecules uh, such as chondroitinase ABC where we can actually target extracellular matrix molecules in the spinal cord and we can pre either prevent the scar tissue from forming or once it's formed to dissolve it. And this is what's shown here. So here is a uh, control uh, tissue, a lot of scar tissue, and here's what it looks like after a treatment with chondroitinase. The scar is almost gone. So what happens with the stem cells? Now we get them to regenerate. And so now this is proliferating up and down the, the spinal cord. And we get just as good results now in the chronic injury as we did in the acute and the subacute uh, injuries. And this is work that's just gone off for, for, uh, for publication, but we're seeing significant improvements in, uh, in function. And, and, and finally, in situations uh, where, where we have even more of a barrier, we may need to think about ways to potentially to actually recreate the circuits. And this will require an even more sophisticated strategy. And, and these are uh, efforts that in which we're collaborating with um, Dr. Molly Shoykut, whose lab is just across uh, uh, the street from us at the U of T. And uh, she's working on the development of guidance channels. And this is uh, the cartoon here, where we can actually use these guidance channels uh, uh, to try to bridge uh, these damaged neural circuits. So I'm going to close, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a, a remarkable development. And this is the world's first clinical trial with a recombinant protein that is actually targeting nerve cell regeneration. And this is a Canadian success story. This is now a Montreal-Toronto collaboration between Lisa McCarricker and myself, Lisa McCarricker being the, the basic scientist and, and the failings uh, team providing the, the neurosurgical input. What the cartoon on the right uh, uh, tries to show is the key pathways that block nerve cells from growing back. And so what's remarkable is, is that this, a lot of the circuitry has now been worked out. And the top cell is, uh, is a glial cell. These are the support cells. And following injury, they express molecules, including no-go and other molecules, that, that block nerve cell regeneration. They signal through a receptor called the NGR receptor, and downstream, through a molecule called Rho. And when Rho is upregulated, it causes cell death and it blocks nerve cell regeneration. So the circuitry has been worked out. 